2023 may be the best year of television ever. Now I know we've had some amazing years of TV, but 2023 may just take the cake. Many believe that we are in a golden age of television series, and I wholeheartedly agree with this sentiment. For the last 20 to 30 years, television has had projects that rival even some of the best films. And the truth is, nowadays it's hard to even keep up with all the cinematically enticing shows that we're getting. Now with 2023 officially in the books, let's go back and revisit some of the best shows and moments of the past year. Let's start with HBO. HBO is known for producing quality, and they kept that trend going in 2023 without a doubt. They kicked off the year with an adaption of the 2013 video game The Last of Us. It starred Pedro Pascal and Bella Ramsey as the two protagonists, Joel and Ellie respectively. As a huge fan of The Last of Us video games, both the original and part two, I couldn't be more thrilled with how this turned out. Game creator Neil Druckmann alongside co-showrunner Craig Mazin adapted the game in the most respectful and authentic way possible in my opinion. Just enough differences to keep us diehard fans on our toes, but still keeping true to the overall premise and world of the game. I honestly think most of the casting was inspired and everyone involved seemed like they did their absolute best to keep the OG fans happy while simultaneously expanding to new audiences. You keep going for family. I'm not family. No. Your cargo. Around the same time, we got word from Jesse Armstrong, the creator of Succession, that the fourth season was going to be the final one and it would be debuting on HBO in March. He's on the floor, Tom. Explain to me what he's doing. He's moseying, terrifyingly moseying. It's like if Santa Claus was a hitman. Lucky for me, I finally got around to watching Succession and was able to watch the fourth season live as the episodes debuted. Now, I've watched a lot of shows over the years and I have many, many favorites. And with Succession now wrapped up, I have to say, this may be the best series I've ever seen. I don't say this lightly as there are many shows I adore like Breaking Bad, True Detective, Fargo, Game of Thrones, but upon reflection, Succession is nearly perfect in its execution. It doesn't overstay its welcome and it creates absolutely iconic and despicable storylines and characters. When I first started the show, I didn't know how it was going to keep its premise interesting for multiple seasons. This concern didn't last long as I quickly became fully invested in the Roy family saga. The composer Nicholas Bertel captured the essence of this arrogant dynasty perfectly. This show is just absolutely must watch television. I love you, but you are not serious people. If that wasn't enough, we got the final season of Barry, which was created by Bill Hader. Bill Hader shows off his writing and directing chops, while also showing us some great dramatic acting and getting those moments of comedy that the actor does so well. Shout out to Anthony Kerrigan, who plays Noho Hank, one of my favorite characters in the show. Yeah, everything's gonna be great. We also got a third season of The Righteous Gemstones, which is co-created by Danny McBride, who also stars in it. Dr. Gemstone, I don't take advice from you a no mo. At this moment, I am not in the mood to discuss this any further. This is another very entertaining series with some great comedic moments and performances if you haven't seen it. If you've seen any of the other HBO Danny McBride shows like Eastbound and Down or Vice Principals, I think you'll like Righteous Gemstones as well. Let's move over to Netflix who also had a couple great shows this last year. Stop, 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 I'm doing something. Sticking in the comedy realm, around Memorial Day, we got the release of the third season of I Think You Should Leave, created by Tim Robinson. This type of comedy is right up my alley and is one of the few shows to constantly have me belly laughing. It's definitely a very specific level of humor and might not be for everyone, but I highly recommend checking it out if you haven't, because it may just become one of your new favorite comedies. I'm really crossed up. Now changing pace, Netflix also released a new show from the brilliant mind of Mike Flanagan. If you don't know Mike Flanagan, he's easily one of the most renowned horror thriller directors of the modern era. He created The Haunting of Hill House and Bly Manor, Midnight Mass, Gerald's Game, Hush, Doctor Sleep, and more. Flanagan knocked it out of the park with Usher yet again, and he's one of my top current filmmakers. He's very consistent, and almost everything he's done has been of the highest quality. Usher is a slight departure for the filmmaker with a reduced focus on horror, although it still has its moments in that realm, but the limited series, which is based on an Edgar Allan Poe short story, is riveting nonetheless. May it rest in peace. 
Amazon Prime released a spin-off show in the universe of the boys titled Gen V. Gen V had its ups and downs for me, but ultimately proved itself as a worthwhile spin-off, and I'm excited to see where it takes the story next. If you enjoyed the irreverence and violence of the boys, you're sure to like Gen V as well. Disney Plus gave us a great conclusion to Loki with season two, and it still has one of the coolest soundtracks I've ever heard. Tom Hiddleston has owned this role, and we get a fun new addition to the cast in Kei Hee Kwan. Yeah, you've seen that. Yeah, can you fix that? No. He's such a lovable actor, and he delivers another great performance in this role. All around a great finale for Loki. The Mandalorian season three wasn't my favorite, but we did get Ahsoka, and that turned out to be a really good watch. We are no Jedi. As a big fan of Clone Wars growing up, there was some really awesome fan service in this series. Not to mention, we also got more Bad Batch, so shout out to Dave Filoni. We have a lot of work to do. Once a rebel, always a rebel. Apple TV Plus had a third and potentially final season of Ted Lasso. I know this season wasn't everyone's favorite, but I still enjoyed it and just found this show to be incredibly endearing. So many lovable characters and heartwarming moments. Here's to hoping we see more of AFC Richmond in the years to come. Oh, Rockhead just said great job. Oh. FX gave us a new season of Fargo created by Noah Hawley. I can say from what I've seen, it's excellent so far. You were kidnapped. And for the record, that's just reality. With all due respect, we've got our own reality. You can't do That's not a thing. We also got the 16th season of the hysterical It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Is this a bathroom? Exactly, yes, that's a bathroom. You never told me we had a toilet. It's not a good one. We piss in cans, Charlie. This show still hits for me after all this time, and I'm glad that we are still getting new episodes to this day. Shout out to the gang, and let's hope this show goes for another 20 years. Also, if you're a fan of this show and you haven't seen the movie Blackberry, I highly recommend checking it out because Glenn Howerton gives an excellent performance in it. Even Paramount Plus and Showtime got in on the action with the A24 produced show called The Curse. The show was co-created by the bizarre mind of Nathan Fielder alongside Benny Safdie who co-directed the film Good Time and Uncut Gems. It also stars the prestigious Emma Stone. Everyone will get to see who you really are. Fielder takes on more of a serious role that is full of his quintessential cringy humor still. All the leads in this show give some fantastic performances, and I can promise you, you could never predict where this show goes. You know you can tell me anything, right? Of course. So these were just the shows I personally got around to watching in 2023, and I think it makes a pretty compelling case as to why 2023 is one of the best years for television series. Now, there were also many other shows that I didn't get around to watching just yet, so here's a list of some of those other shows in 2023 that came out and received mostly positive reviews from what I've seen. The Bear Season 2, Reservation Dogs Season 3, Only Murders in the Building Season 3, What We Do in the Shadows Season 5, Black Mirror Season 6, Scott Pilgrim Takes Off, Beef, The Live Action One Piece, The Witcher Season 3, Castlevania Nocturne, Monarch, The Morning Show Season 3, our Flag Means Death Season 2, Star Wars Visions Season 2, Daisy Jones and the Six, The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel Season 5, and Invincible Season 2. All in all, I think it's pretty safe to say that 2023 will go down as one of the best, if not the best, year for television shows. There's still a lot I'm hoping to catch up on. But in the meantime, let me know what I may have missed as there were so many great things out there and some of them may have slipped through the cracks. Thank you so much for watching and here's to 2024 and another great year of entertainment. We'll see ya. Hey everyone, hope you enjoyed this episode of Tells from the Cinema. I plan to do more content like this, so please consider subscribing, liking, and sharing. And feel free to leave a comment below and following me on social media at Tells from Cinema on Twitter and Tells from the Cinema on Instagram. It would be much appreciated. Thanks for watching everyone, and I'll see you next time.